one thing I learnt in teaching economics for so many years at St. Joseph's College is teach the introductory chapter in economics well because it is here where students pick up the very many ideas that are there, the name of authors in important books in economics and also the foundation of the science of economics. So after following Adam Smith's definition, we shall now look into uh, Alfred Marshall's definition. And um, I will be using PowerPoint here. The PowerPoints have got more text than what is usually written on a slide. It's only to help you with some notes that you may require for your study. So let me go straight away to the PowerPoint slide. And economics is often introduced to a, sub, a student by using this word oikos and nomos. It is customary and it means managing a household. It means that now what are the principles or rules that are used to manage resources at home? And if we know them, we can use the same principles and resources to manage an economy. This is how we understand the origin of the name economics. And the second important economist uh, whose uh, writing has also been considered as the definition and it is called the welfare definition is Alfred Marshall. Alfred Marshall, 1842-1924 and he wrote his book in 1890. And mind you that um, this book that he has uh, written has come out more than 100 years after what Smith uh, wrote his book, The Wealth of nations. Now his contributions is immense because he, he tried to give a scientific uh, uh, presentation to economics and wanted to move it away from the subject having a moral grounding. He wanted more it to be a, a subject which describes economic behavior. And uh, he uh, resorted to using mathematics in uh, explaining economic behavior because he felt that mathematics is exact, it is precise, and uh, it can be uh, used to explain the economic behavior. So he wanted to take it away from the subject of moral philosophy. Now, in the quotes that uh, we uh, see of Marshall, he talks about the necessities, comforts and luxuries of life. Now, these are words we use in commonplace today, but those days that those words were used for the first time. That is why I gave you this particular quote. Now, let's see the wealth, uh, welfare definition of, Smith, of Marshall. The question is, why should we accumulate wealth? What is the purpose of this accumulation of wealth? So he said that as economics is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. In a day-to-day -day life, how do we manage ourselves with wealth? And he says that we examine that part of individual and social action. So he's not only studying the individual action, but he also talks about social actions which is most uh, closely connected with the attainment and use of material requisites for of well-being. So on one hand, it is a study of mankind. On the other hand, it is a study of wealth. So it is that wealth cannot be studied just for its sake. It has to be studied with a purpose. What is the purpose of studying about wealth? The wealth should improve the welfare of people. It should help the well-being of people. That is why it is called the welfare economics. So we study wealth on one hand and we understand the mankind on the other and how this wealth is used for improving the life and um, well-being of people. So this is considered to be the welfare definition. This led to a subject called welfare economics that we presently study. This was followed by another important economist, Lionel Robbins, 1898 to 1984, and he wrote his book in 1932, an essay on the nature and significance of economic science. Like I told you in the first presentation, that uh, what happens is uh, each writer adds up something to the existing 
writer's idea. So now Robbins also continues with the idea of Smith and uh, that of Marshall. So here he writes that he introduces uh, more of ideas on methodology. That means how do we study economics? That was his uh, main uh, contribution and he used words like positive and normative economics and inductive and deductive reasoning. I am not going into the details of these words right now because too many new words at the same time can also become confusing to uh, a new learner. Now to understand in simple words it means positive economics will study uh, or describe how economic activities are being carried out and normative economics means what ought to be or should be is the focus of study. So and the other one is about the method of reasoning, inductive reasoning or deductive reasoning. These are used uh, in uh, research. Uh, later, but nevertheless, I will make a presentation to you on these four terms alone uh, in a uh, coming some of the coming sessions. And uh, he also introduced terms like economic activities and non-economic activities. And in his book, he has got a very interesting example about Robinson Crusoe. And he says, if Robinson Crusoe teaches his parrot to sing in his island. It is not an economic activity, but if he brings the parrot and does it on a stage and people watch it and give him some money, the same activity becomes an economic activity. So these kind of subtleties that were not known then or not conceptualized then was done by Robbins. And his quote, uh, the one that is about um, conflict uh, of choice is an interesting one because he says that conflict uh, in life is permanent. So everybody goes through uh, various kinds of conflict and therefore we need to understand conflict and we need to understand how do we make choices when we reach a state of conflict. And then he also made the statement that we human beings are sentient conscious creatures where we are full of hopes and full of desires and that is how he builds his idea of economics itself. And he says that um, his definition is known as the scarcity definition. Now, what was that scarcity that he talks about? He says that human beings are a bundle of uh, hopes and uh, 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 aspirations. That means there are so many needs that we have. The ends that we want to achieve with our economic activities are many. And for that, he uh, um, says that these end, to reach that end, we need resources and then he explains in his definition how it studies human behavior. Now when you say human behavior, human behavior is studied in psychology, in sociology, uh, in uh, um, political science but that is not economics. So we study only that part of human behavior which is dealing with material resources not all human behavior. That's why he says that these human beings have got unlimited wants and then we try and understand how to satisfy these wants. We find that the resources that we have to satisfy that want is very limited. And he also raises this issue that all the resources that we have with us has got alternative uses. Now what do we mean by alternative uses? A small piece of land can be used for agriculture, can be used for uh, using it as a meadow, it can be used for construction, it can be left fallow, it can be uh, meant for constructing a building, it can be used for constructing a road. There are so many alternative uses that can be done of this piece of land. So what we want to really do with that land is a matter of choice. What is our need and therefore to meet that need we use this resource. And uh, Smith was, um, sorry, Robbins was very clear that we are not interested in the nature of ends, the quality or quantity of ends. That incidentally became the subject of marketing where they study how these uh, ends are, what are the quality of wants, who, who needs what and so and so forth. So that's not the subject of economics. In economics we are very clear. We want to know how do we use our limited resources to meet this unlimited uh, ends? And all resources have got alternative uses. Therefore, we have to make a choice in the use of the resources. So, money, time, uh, energy, all these are considered as resources. And these are all uh, limited as well. The next definition is that of Paul Samuelson. 
and Paul Samuelson uh, happens to be a Nobel laureate. And now we have a Nobel laureates in physics, chemistry, in uh, literature, in peace, and we also have in economics. So Nobel Prize is given to an economist who, uh, who, who contributes immensely to the discipline and it can show different paths to uh, pursue in that discipline. So he was a second Nobel Prize winner in 1970, it started in 1969. And his uh, book was called as The Foundation of Economic Analysis. So he looked into individual behavior but also he worked on um, the macroeconomic issues, a diverse field of macroeconomic issues and uh, he tried to contribute immensely to that area of study. So just like um, uh, he, he understood the Marshall's idea of using mathematics in uh, economics and therefore believed that Mathematics is the normal or the usual language of economists which they can explain the economic behavior in a very um, precise and exact manner and he used it with mathematics with rigor. Now this mathematics can help in analyzing the cause and effect relationship between different uh, kinds of phenomena that happen in economics. And he said that uh, this mathematics uh, gives the scientific character to economics and uh, we, we, we will understand that uh, uh, his quotes are like this. Uh, look, let's uh, look into his quote. The consumer is the king. Now what do we mean by consumer as the king? The consumer is a king means that this consumer has voting rights. Now, can you think what are the voting rights? The voting right is the money that he has with him. When he has money with him, he buys goods for it. So when he buys something, he is expressing his choice or his desire. And the manufacturer or the producer will produce what this uh, consumer wants. That is what he meant by the consumer being the king. Now let's look at the uh, definition of uh, Paul Samuelson. Uh, you will wonder why I have used black and red uh, fonts in the uh, slide. It is because the first set of words that are present there, these words are taken from Smith, uh, Marshall and uh, Robbins. So the ideas, what um, Samuelson did was he collected the ideas of the earlier writers he made, uh, uh, he gave it a different meaning and then he concluded his own definition. Let us read that. Economics is a study of how people and society. So you are studying about individuals, but you are also studying about uh, society. What do they do? They end up choosing. Choosing comes from uh, Robin's definition. With or without the use of money, where we are talking about Smith's wealth part of it. To employ scarce productive resources. Again, we are talking about a Robin's definition. That could have alternative uses. So whatever is there, it is using also having an alternative. To do what? To produce various commodities over time and distributing them for consumption for now and for the future among various persons and groups. So the very purpose of economics is not only to use wealth to satisfy the human wants, but it is also to use scarce resources carefully. And the purpose of the scarce resources is to uh, give people uh, the well-being so that they can choose what they want to do. And finally, he says that we can't leave a society poor. So we have to, the economies have to grow. When we say economies have to grow, we mean economies can produce more goods, Economies uh, should be able to save more and by that we should be able to produce for now and for future and which should take care of the largest number of people. So more people should get the benefit of using the available resources in the future, which simply means that the economy must grow. And that is why this definition is called as the, uh, the growth definition in economics. Now the last unit uh, points to ponder. Here I like you to uh, understand that 
um, this choice making is fundamental to human life. So chat with your elders, uh, talk to your elders, your parents, uncles and aunts or sisters. Brother. How do they make choices? What consideration do they keep in mind when they make choices? And uh, when you say, uh, Robin said time, time is a resource. Can you look at the way we spend time? Would you like to look at the way you are spending time? Do you feel satisfied with the way you allocate your time over various uses? And uh, in the light of this definition of uh, Robin's, try and understand the use of time. And the last question that I have for you is, which of these definitions makes more sense to you and why? So we have done four definitions till now. Adam Smith's definition of wealth, the accumulation of wealth, uh, Robin, uh, sorry, Marshall's definitions of uh, uh, welfare, because that is the purpose of uh, wealth is to improve the welfare. And third one, we said that of uh, Robbins, which, he, which was meant for increasing um, the efficiency of an economy where whatever resources are available, they can be put to the best uh, uses. That was the purpose of uh, Robbins' definition um, and trying to match between resources and ends. And finally, we had the growth definition, which was uh, telling that the resources must increase. We must be able to produce more and produce more so that more people can get it, not only now, but also in the future. So using these four definitions, try and understand economics as a subject which uses mathematics. So don't give up the mathematics that you have, because as you go ahead, you will require more and more of uh, mathematics uh, in the study of economics. So kindly uh, share uh, this uh, channel's uh, link and also subscribe for it because once you subscribe for it, you will find that other students can have access to it and they could also learn economics uh, in, in some way. Thank you very much students. Thank you.